Solving a word problem using a system of linear inequalities, problem type one. So we have this word problem here, or a real world situation. DeAndre does a weekly exercise program consisting of cardiovascular work and weight training. Each week, he exercises for at least 12 hours. So this is a key word here, or a key phrase. That's gonna help us set up one of our inequalities. And he spends at most seven hours on weight training. Another key phrase there that we're gonna use to help us set up a second inequality. He spends uh, at most, here's another one, eight hours doing cardiovascular work. Let X denote the time in hours that DeAndre spends doing cardi cardiovascular work. Let Y denote the time in hours that he spends on weight training. Shade the region corresponding to all values of X and Y that satisfy these requirements. Okay, so I have a pretty complicated situation here. Um, I have lots of uh, constraints, okay, or things that I need to take into account. But first, I'm just going to put a reminder to myself here. X represents, they tell me here, the hours spent on cardiovascular work. So hours of cardio. Okay. And Y represents the hours spent weight training. So why is hours of weight training? And while I'm at it, since I don't have any labels on my, my coordinate plane or my grid here, I'm going to go ahead and put some labels. So this is hours of cardio. Along my x-axis. Hours of weight training here. Okay, and this is my y-axis. All right, so then I'm going to write my inequalities, okay, and graph them. So I actually have several different, we call them constraints, right, limits or boundaries to um, my situation here. Okay, my first one right here is this, deals with this phrase, at least. So each week... He exercises for at least 12 hours. So combined, cardio and weight training, he does at least 12 is the minimum that he exercises. So 12 is going to go on the um, less than side or the pointy side of my inequality symbol. So cardio and weight training combined, okay? have to be greater than or equal to 12, or 12 is the minimum on the less than or the pointy side, okay? The exercise, combined exercise is more than that. Then um, he spends at most seven hours on weight training. So this one's going to deal just with Y because our information only refers to the weight training. So my second inequality here, um, the most he spends is seven hours. So seven is a maximum. It's going to go on the greater than side of my inequality here. And my variable for, for weight training is going to be less than that, less than seven. Um, could be equal to as well. Right? We're okay if we spend exactly 7, we just can't go over. So y is less than or equal to 7. Um, then he spends at most 8 hours doing cardiovascular work. So this one's going to be really similar to my last one, just I'm using x to represent my cardio, and the cardio has to be less than or equal to 8. This is the maximum, or the most it will be. 
So I always spend less than that. Okay, so, so far I have three inequalities here. Um, and then I actually have two more things I need to consider that, that aren't spelled out specifically here. But if you notice my coordinate plane or my grid, it only shows the first quadrant, okay? That's because in most real life application problems or in lots of them, negative values wouldn't make any sense. Like here, we're never going to exercise or spend negative three hours of cardio in a week, right? The least amount we can do is nothing, zero, okay? So I have to add a couple more constraints here. My weight training, or excuse me, my cardio, X, is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Equal would mean I did no cardio that week, and anything greater would be what I did. Okay, and my weight training also has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I actually have a system that I'm going to graph of five different inequalities here. Okay, so I'm just going to start this one. I need solved for y. Okay, so if I subtract x from both sides, I'm going to go ahead and write this just down here, do a little scratch work. So x plus y greater than or equal to 12. It's if I subtract x from both sides to isolate that y or get the y by itself, I end up with y greater than or equal to, I'm actually going to put the x term first, negative x plus 12. So I'm going to just rewrite that up here. Y is greater than or equal to negative X plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead with my graphing. So I'm going to graph this line first. And so my Y intercept is 12. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lines. So this will be 12 right, at the top, and uh, one, two, I'm just going to put in a couple other numbers here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay? So my y-intercept of my first line is going to be 12, and then my slope is negative one. Remember, there's kind of an implied negative 1 right there, so negative 1x, or down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, right? I could keep this up and just line up a bunch of points for this boundary, okay? Now, because it's greater than or equal to I'm going to connect up these dots now with a solid line, okay? And I, I'm interested in the points that are greater than that boundary line, okay? So I want the points that are above, okay, or on top of that boundary line. So I'm going to really lightly here, okay, I'm not going to put in really dark shading because I'm going to end up erasing some of this in a minute, okay? So I'm just going to put in some really light shading right there. So I have my first inequality graphed. This next one, y is less than or equal to 7. I only have a y, so on my y-axis, or axis, I put a dot at 7, okay? And then I need a line going through that. When I only have y or only have x, I'm dealing with horizontal or vertical lines. This one, since it needs to go through 7, the point 7 on the y-axis, it's going to be horizontal, okay? And since I have the equal to involved, it's going to be a solid line, not dashed. And I'm interested in the points that are less than 7. So to this side of that horizontal line, okay? Now, since at the very end of everything, I only am interested in the points that satisfy every inequality in my entire system, and I now adding this second one, I know I'm only interested below here. 
I'm going to just go ahead and erase this shading up here because I'm not interested in these points anymore. As I continue to add lines, I'm just going to get rid of any shading that I don't need anymore. So now I'm down to just shading in this wedge here. Like I said, keeping it kind of light until I'm done because I'm going to end up erasing some of this. So we've graphed this one. We've graphed this one. Now we need to do this one. X is less than or equal to 8. Again, if you only have X or Y, you're dealing with horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to go to the X axis, put a dot at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 right here. I should have put some numbers along the x-axis. I'll go ahead and do that quickly. So this would be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So there's 8. And this is going to be a vertical line. And since I have the equal to, I'm going to put in a solid line. Okay. And I want where my x's are less than 8, less than or equal to. So now I know I'm only interested in points to this side of my boundary line. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this shading. Because I'm not interested in those points anymore. So now I'm down to just this little triangle of shading. Okay, that's what I'm left with. Done the third one. Now, these last two, like I said, just kind of um, indicate that we're only looking at positive values, nothing negative. So x is greater than or equal to 0. That would be the x-axis. Right, this line right here, and we only want points that are in the positive region, which we have. And this one would be y is greater than or equal to 0, so a horizontal line crossing the y-axis at 0, okay, crossing right there. And we want points that are greater than, so we have that taken care of. And so this little triangle right here in between all these points is my solution region. And I'm done.